specifically mm. on on the show so he sent these to me a few weeks wow, ago and um, he wore these on the show he's actually supposed to be wearing these this season as well uh, because he was supposed to be back in the NBA but you know it didn't really work out for yeah. him I'm not sure yet if he's going to be attempting to, to for next year as well. Yeah. But um, but Allen's a great person. You know, I, I love that dude. Like he's a he's a really good guy, mm -hmm. and um, you know he's very active in the community yeah. as I'm, I'm sure you're familiar That's with. Very very significant too. It's a point I stress on this show that if we could just get a lot more of the athletes and entertainers to be conscious about mm -hmm. their resources and about yep. developing relationships with young entrepreneurs or just black entrepreneurs, period. Look at how much uh, 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 empowerment could go on between uh, producer and consumer, manufacturer yep. and consumer. Yep. Uh, it's just amazing. And I, yeah. I admire <clears throat> people like Alan Houston and Gary Sheffield for doing what they're yeah. doing with you and there are others who have done similar things but there are many more who have not so yeah rap artists uh, entertainers yeah. athletes please if yeah. you're watching this if you hear about it please think about what you can do to empower an entrepreneur yeah. a young business person a young black business person as well mm -hmm. well just to add to that as well there was a uh, there was a program i was watching on um Stephen A. Smith show. Uh -huh. I don't know when he had a show on yeah. ESPN yeah. quite some mm -hmm. time ago, and uh, I remember he had this professor from uh, from Louisiana State University LSU, uh -huh. uh, who I think he was an African American studies yeah. professor, and he was talking about um, professional athletes, uh, black professional athletes, right. and you know, and, and black entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and saying and was kind of elaborating on the the fact that there's a system that's set up to where we don't interact with each other right. or it's very difficult oh, yeah. to, to get yeah. with e to, to link up with each other and they're gatekeepers yeah they're, yeah, they're gatekeepers <laughs> that prevent yeah. because they know what could happen That's right. if you put someone with the brains and who has right. a certain ability That's with right. someone who has the financial power and the stability That's right. and you know and, and all the other things that come yeah. with that yeah. you know the celebrity and all the other things you want to add to that together what could actually happen and you know what I talked about this, I may have talked about it in the class you were in, but I just talked about it to my class this year. Mm -hmm. The importance of, as we go through college, there may be a person who designs shoes, there may be a person who's a CPA, there may be a person who is uh, going to be a, a, an, an attorney. Right. Going to school, sitting every day in a class with a Kenyon Martin, yeah. sitting every day in a class with an Allen Houston, yeah. develop the relationship. relationship. Say, hey, when we get out, let's do this thing together. Yep. I can't play ball, but I can certainly look out for your contract. Yeah. I can't play ball, but I can design and your shoes. shoes. Yeah. That's, that's the ideal partnership yeah. that yep. we should have, and we can start those uh, relationships not only in college but even in high school. Right, of that's course. That's the ideal relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the relationship that I have with Gary and Alan, you know, I basically consider that cycle broken yeah. because now these guys are they well are aware of, of what, what I can do and people that I have around me that can do. And it's just a matter of, you know, once we put our heads together and figure out how to do it, of which we are doing it right yeah. now, yeah. Um, what, what the outcome could be. Yeah. Is it, the possibilities are endless. So we've had baseball, here's basketball. What else do you have? And then these shoes here were, um, these were done for, uh, well, these are lifestyle shoes. This is actually a part of the SG3 Gary Sheffield brand as okay. well. And um, there's this artist by the name of uh, T Pain that uh, uh -oh, that wears these shoes. Industry. <laughs> the rap industry so, uh, <laughs> so these are these are T Pain shoes. I did these specifically for T Pain, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't think he'd play basketball in these. <laughs> but, uh, they are pretty stylish. No, no, believe me, he, he is far from an athlete. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's nowhere near. At, he doesn't have any, too much athletic ability. He he's a great guy, but yeah, not a whole lot of athletic ability there. Yeah. He's not afraid to let me know that or let yeah. anybody know that. But uh, interesting story about this. Um, so we were, so Gary contacts me and says, um, says, um, you know, we're going to Atlanta to meet T-Pain. We're mm -hmm. going to go to this place. We're going to meet with him. He said, I want you to design something that you think he'll like. Mm. I said, okay, cool. So I did, I did something, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with him because, uh -huh. you know, I'm only 25 years old oh, yeah, uh, audience. So I'm, too, you know, I'm, I'm not that, old. I'm not that far. I'm not much <laughs> older than, than many of the viewers out there. Yeah. So, um, so I do listen to T-Pain's music and I listen to a lot of, Hip hop as well, and um, and being that I'm familiar with his music and familiar with him, I kind of had an idea as to what he would like. You know, creative. Yeah. They like creative people think alike. So I kind of, I, I think I, I was able to kind of tap in his brain a little bit based on the things that I've heard and things that I've seen. So I did this shoot for him, and I went to his place and we met with him and his manager and and his other crew with him and. Uh, 
and we had a, a book laid out and it had all the drawings that I did for the whole line of shoes, which yeah. was 50 some odd pairs of shoes that I designed between baseball cleats and lifestyle shoes. So we give him the book and he's flipping through and he's like, oh man, these are cool, man, this is really cool, I like this. <laughs> and then bam, he stops right on this drawing and I look and it's this shoe that he wow. stops on. And his name was and on the shoe. Had the shoe. And already had the shoe done. <laughs> and, his and, and, and the confirmation was that his name was on it, but he didn't see it, which was made it even better. So, um, and his name was like written right on the side of the shoe. It's not on this model, it's yeah. on the ones that he has, right. but not on this one. So, uh, so it says T-Pain right on the side of the shoe and wow. he didn't see it. So he said, so, so they're like, hey, Omar, he stopped on your shoe. And we looked and he said, well, look a little bit closer at that black stripe on the shoe. Yeah. And then he looks and he sees his name on it and he flipped right out. He was like, oh, wow. man, this is crazy. So, <laughs> like, it was like a home run when, oh, yeah. when that happened. So, you know, it was it was great wow. situation from there. And, and that really, like, opened up the meeting and, and allowed us to sort of, like, build a, build yeah. a business relationship from there pretty That's much. Great. So it was um, across three industries here. Yeah, three completely different industries. Basketball, yeah. baseball, and, and the hip hop, hip hop, hip -hop. industry. Yeah, yeah. And, so and and, and the, the the sky's the limit because there's so many more that yeah. that you haven't contacted that or uh, that you're not doing business mm -hmm. with, which provides a potential market for you right. even wider. Right. This is just amazing, Omar, and and I really mean that sincerely. That you have, you are really a role model, the role model that I would love for young people to see mm -hmm. and to be able to engage mm -hmm. because. Just like I started out saying, we got to take people off a negative path and put them on a positive right, path. Right, But they absolutely. need to see yes. what the possibilities are. Yeah. They need to see what the opportunities are. Mm -hmm. When you come back to Cincinnati, I really want to take you to the Entrepreneurship High School. Okay, So absolutely. you can talk to the students there as well. There's, this is just, I mean, it's just outstanding. And again, I'm just so proud of mm -hmm. you and, and for having done, mm -hmm. followed through what yeah. you said you were going to do. Yeah. Uh, when you were here at the university, of course, I didn't know that you were talking about doing it way back in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just amazing. You have any other any other projects? Uh, yeah, actually, I have a couple other shoes. This is uh, the the children oh, stuff that I did for shoes. for another, Timberland. Another yeah, another market. Huh? So when I worked for Timberland, I was the um, I was their kids designer, so I did all the kids stuff okay. uh, for Timberland. And this is just one a uh, couple pairs of uh, of many different children's shoes that I was able to work on, which a lot of them are out uh, at the moment. I believe these are out. These and you are actually designed and they, I designed these. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I have a lot of shoes that that came out while I was in college. Like yeah. when I was when I was a pre junior at the University of Cincinnati, I had an opportunity when I did my first internship with New Balance, uh -huh. and I designed a pair of uh, baseball. No, excuse me. I'm sorry. Football cleats that the University of Auburn's football yeah. team wore uh, in 2005. The whole they wore the whole football team wow. wore the shoes, uh -huh. which is which is amazing. So uh -huh. that was so that and I was still in college at the time. I think I was 2005. I was a junior in college watching Man. Auburn play football games and they got my shoes, got on shoes on while I'm doing homework preparing for class the next day you know it's like wow it's like so um you know it's it, 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 it honestly is a dream come true I was talking yeah. to my father the other day and and um you know recently I was in Europe teaching a design workshop in um, yeah, at, uh, at 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 Leiden at Leiden University which is in uh, Holland Netherlands and uh I had an opportunity to go there and through networking again is how I met the uh, representative of their school who invited oh. me to come. We was at, I was at a networking event in New York City, which I do a lot of. Go to a lot of networking, business networking events where we actually, where you know, you, you do one-on-one -on -one networking, exchanging right. business cards right. and talking right. to people. And I was at a business networking lunch. And I was sitting next to a young lady who was a representative of this university in Holland. And I was sharing with her about my business and what it is that I'm doing. And she was kind of sharing me what she's doing here yeah. in New York. And, you know, as she's kind of uh, helping to market the school and, and make new relationships for the school. And I was sharing with her what I did. And she said, it would be great if you come to our school and teach a workshop. I said, absolutely. Six months later, I'm on a plane going out to, wow. going out to Europe for the first time. I'd never been to mm -hmm. Europe before. So I was really excited about it. And I knew it was going to be a great opportunity for me to go there, make new relationships, and possibly continue to travel over there and do these right. workshops and to engage in, in, in the conversations and build new relationships with yeah. people, not only in Holland, but other countries as well. So, um, so I had an opportunity to go there, and I just taught a design workshop for one day. Uh, right. where, I, um, where I gave the students a project, a previous project that I worked on, and I critiqued them as they, as they move forward with the project to right. see what their final mm -hmm. result was. And it's not a design school either. It's more of a technical, like engineering kind of right. school. But they really want, they, want, they want their students to be aware of all of this stuff. Because just like you said, <laughs> with people 
you know, you, with partnerships. You know, you need right. one person who's good at one thing, and then have That's another right. person who's good at another. And right. that was the thing. That's it right. was, you know, so it was it was kind of a trip where it wasn't really everything wasn't as clear the reason uh -huh. why I was there, but they knew that something good would come out of yeah. it. And that's why I was there, to build this relationship and see where it can go. Right. Possibly when my company grows and we get a new office space in New York City, I want to have interns. I want to be able to have an international intern. Yeah. I want to be able to have a, you know, a local intern from the States mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, or elsewhere yeah. and have them to interact with each other. Yeah. Like I'm thinking about that because I was that person at some that's point. Right. You know, I, was that, yeah. I was that intern who was looking for information, who was looking to be educated right. in a professional environment. So I want to be able to provide those things and some of the things that some of the employers that I worked for wasn't able to provide because, you know, they, they weren't in the situation, so they wouldn't right. know what to provide. I know what to provide because I was there. I like to think that that is a part of what we talked about in class, mm -hmm. consciousness. Yes. That you have grown to a level of consciousness where you understand how important it is to pass on mm -hmm. information that you yes. have to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's what consciousness is all about. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I can't stress it enough to the viewers that if we would just work every day to raise our consciousness about who we are and about what our obligations are to one another, we do much better collectively. Absolutely. Because as Omar has just said, it's all about relationships. And part of that relational kind of uh, uh, work that we have to do is to help someone else, to share information. There's enough in this world for all of us. We have to stop thinking scarcity and think abundance. Mm -hmm. Because there's enough here for all of us. If we work together, use our resources together, bring them together into one entity, right. one movement, one effort, one initiative, mm -hmm. then we can accomplish, as Marcus Garvey said, what we will. Right, absolutely. And I'm, I'm just so impressed with what Omar Bailey has done and is doing and will do in the future. And he's already opened up the gate for some young people to, to hook up with him to be a protege of his so that he can help help you along in your uh, uh, career and maybe even uh, towards your own business. So, uh, Omar, I mean, this has just been, the time has flown. We have about five, six, seven minutes left. But uh, it, it's just been a tremendous opportunity, I, I believe, mm -hmm. for the brothers and sisters here in Cincinnati to see you again since mm -hmm. you've been here for a while mm -hmm. and to see the kind of progress that you've made. Now, I'll be showing clips of this in my class next year okay. uh, in the entrepreneurship class. And of course, you're going to uh, lecture uh, my class on uh, Thursday. Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. June the 5th. Yep. Uh, and I appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. So anyone who wants to get in touch with Omar, you see his number, a number on an email on the screen, not a number, but call me and I will put you in touch with uh, with Omar if you don't have access to the internet to go to his website and to send him an email. Mm -hmm. But it's just been fantastic. What can you say in summary, Omar, that will kind of capture your life, your experiences, and your recommendations to young entrepreneurs? What can I say? Um, well, I think everyone needs a, uh, it, it's important you have a support system or a support structure. And, um, and my support system throughout this, aside from the network and the people that I've met uh, just over the course of you know, the last eight years and keeping in contact with people, has mm -hmm. been my family. My family has been huge, big supporters of, of everything that I've done from, from my, my mother, my father, all my sisters, yeah. my sister, my brother-in-law that I live with right yeah. now in New York yeah. City. Like they've been more than they've been so gracious to me and very patient with me and, and just basically opened up, mm -hmm. opened up everything to me. And right. it's, been, it's been great because without, if I hadn't had this help, there's no way that I would even be sitting here with you to this day. Well, that's how Motown started. Mm -hmm. An $800 loan from mm -hmm. Barry Gordy's family mm -hmm. to start Motown. Yeah. And he ended up selling the business for $61 million. Wow. So, yeah. you know, it's important <laughs> to have your family, uh, your family support. It's also important to have your friend support but most importantly, it's, it, it's about you, it's about initiative, it's about responsibility, it's about you taking on the onus of, of your own business and moving it forward mm -hmm. with the resources that you have gained. And it's always, always about relationships because Omar and I have stayed in touch since he got out of class uh, a couple of years ago by email. I haven't seen him since, since he graduated, but by email. And by that relationship, I've been able to introduce uh, uh, Omar to some people who may even be doing his manufacturing for him. Mm -hmm. And they're located right here in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Brother right Greg here. Jasper with the company Legends to Legacy. 
uh, they have a, uh, he and his partner, Terry Atwater, who just moved to Chicago, uh, have a company, a manufacturing company in China. Now, <laughs> come on, <laughs> you can make that connection, yeah, right? Yeah, put two and two together. Manufacturing uh, <laughs> China, yeah. this, uh, the shoe that uh, Omar uh, showed us uh, that Gary Sheffield wears was manufactured in mm -hmm. China, right? Everything here is made in China, yep, Brothers absolutely. Brothers and sisters, it's about relationships. And uh, it, Omar has exhibited it. Uh, he's going to continue to use the relationships that he uh, develops and, 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 and use those toward his success. And that's what you should do. Build upon the relationships that you have. Because you may not know how to do something, but if you know somebody who knows how to do it, then you have the best of both worlds. Absolutely. But don't be afraid to, to use other people. And I don't, I don't say use in a negative way but to employ and to engage mm -hmm. and to enroll other people yes. in, in the, what you're doing. Because as I said, there's enough out here for all of us. Mm -hmm. It's really been a pleasure and an honor, really, to have you on this show. Uh, I know it's going to reap tremendous benefits mm -hmm. to our viewers. Mm -hmm. I'll get calls and emails about <laughs> this. And uh, of course, you'll be able to use this because we'll give you a copy of it. Use it in your marketing uh, and your teaching, mm -hmm. your workshops as mm -hmm. well. Absolutely. Continue to spread the word about what you're doing, uh, Omar. It's, it's, it's just been tremendous, man. Mm -hmm. What okay. else can you tell us? I know we have probably a couple of minutes, and when I hear the my favorite rap song coming on uh, <laughs> to close us out, I'll know that it's about time to close. Um, well, you know, it's just, um, I mean, just to reflect back on everything, it's just, uh, you know, hard work, of course. Oh, yes. um, hard work, determination, and just, you know, and. And one and just going for it, not yeah. listening to what people have oh, to yeah. say, That's and really and because I know a lot of people out there who can, you know, who who listen to what other people say. Unfortunately, yeah. they you know, they weren't able to follow their dreams because uh -huh. they listened to what everyone had to say. And the other thing too is that um, I believe that uh, you know, talent only really takes you so far. You have to be you have to be smart in order to get to the next level. It's it's beneficial for me that. I like to think that I have the brains, yeah. and um, but it's beneficial to have the talent and the brains to yeah. go with it right. because there are a lot of people who are more talented than I am, sure. but they may not be doing what I'm doing. They right. may not be working for myself, working for themselves right. as I am, right. or kind of taking it out, you know, trying to take everything to the next level, like like I'm doing. It's all about taking risks and all believing risks. believing in what it is that you're doing mm -hmm. and knowing that there is going to be a positive result that comes right. out of it because a lot of th a lot of things that I get involved with believe me I don't know what the end result is going to be <laughs> like I don't know what it's going to be I question myself all the time right. am I doing the right what thing am, I doing? Right, right. am I doing the right thing and it's like well if I keep doing it then you know it'll work out yeah. so well, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. There's Adrian Curry uh, from the Maya Youth Group. Uh, that's what we've been going out on. Okay. The viewers, please contact me for more information. Uh, remember, you got next, young people. You got next. Thank you. This is Jim Klingman. Talk to you next time. This is a piece of gear that Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. It's really, you know, he made this up. Wow. Wow. So deep, uh, rap about what we need to do for yeah. all people to mm -hmm. participate. He made That's cool. Common That's cool. To the Check common it out. Man. The poor and uneducated all took a stand. Garvey led the largest grassroots movement in African-American history. Did you make him more? Oh, yeah. 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 Oppressed Africans of the world awaken and unite. Rise to full potential. Prepare to stand and fight. Channel your emotional energies toward our racial interests. It takes mass sacrifice. Become, become Afrocentric. Build character, industry, and science education. Establish and prioritize our very own black nation. These are the steps for our people's liberation. To give our people back their freedom. The freedom that was taken. Then protect our new young nation as it is being formed. Our African cultural heritage has got to be affirmed. Marcus Garvey, Jamaican born, 1887, used Garveyism to uplift our people and also as a weapon against blacks and whites who encouraged the status quo, downtrodden Africans across the earth, disrespected no more. In Harlem, racial pride began to flourish. Black is beautiful, black is beautiful, black is beautiful became the verbiage. African Americans taking interest in their history. Garvey was
the spark with his magnetic personality. He said, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. Social, political, economic empowerment gave his dream appeal. Garvey built hotels, laundry mat, steamship, company called Black Star. Back to Africa, people, come just as you are. Created our bandera with red, black, and green colors, symbol of strength for worldwide sisters and brothers. Red for the blood that was shared from the people. Black, our skin and death, and you know there's no equal. Green is from the land that was stolen from us. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Mama Africa is calling to us. If you and I do what other races have done, what other nations have done, then you, sir, will die. That's the, yeah. <laughs> He's the young brother, 18 years old. That's amazing. He did that. That's amazing.